Dr. Zamboni, thank you so much for speaking to us. Can you just tell me real briefly, just tell us about your background and why you took this path in this particular research? Uh, my research of, uh, of what was presented here. Well, just tell us a little bit, an overview first. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a very interesting field, very fascinating, because uh, we are specifically looking to the venous function and the role of venous function in neurodegeneration. We at the beginning uh, uh, look at specifically to multiple sclerosis because at the beginning we found uh, an interesting, uh, strong association between something not well working in veins and multiple sclerosis. This creates, of course, a big interest, but uh, of course also open a lot of new questions. New questions in terms of diagnosis, in terms of uh, new knowledge in pathophysiology, in terms of uh, also treatment, and in terms of uh, perspectives, also including the fact that numerous uh, investigators are uh, describing something wrong in the venous system, also related to other neurodegenerative disorders. So probably opening something new and exciting in other fields, for example, in Parkinson's disease or in other disease, uh, probably less frequent, but uh, of course, uh, very severe in terms of disability and discomfort for people and for the family. Why did you initially begin down this path? Uh, I began to investigate, uh, first of all, I, I began to study. And uh, this because uh, uh, my family and my wife was stricken by a mess and uh, was completely in other cat as physician and uh, as husband to answer the questions. So I began to study and uh, by studying uh, uh, I became aware that uh, uh, a particular line of research including circulation and particularly veins was uh, described and was present in the history of research in multiple sclerosis. I felt this, this was very interesting to me because my background is of 25 years research in the venous system. So I decided to give my contribution uh, in the development of a research line which was abandoned uh, between the 60s and 70s. And uh, maybe this happened for the lacking of uh, technology uh, permitting to investigate uh, this vessel. At the time, you may think that there was no MRI, no Doppler, no ultrasound. So it was very difficult for, for my colleague of the past to develop this research line. The other important thing was, uh, was to move out of a skull. At a certain point, I found uh, some uh, uh, findings suggesting me that probably there was something uh, out of a skull. And this was the perimeter, very well delineated of all the research in this field, especially multiple sclerosis. So I decided to move outside. And moving outside, uh, thanks to these uh, innovative technologies and uh, thanks to my background in hemodynamics of veins, I found something uh, that was abnormal and uh, was uh, really amazing to, to discover this. Well, you've been uh, referred to at this meeting as the founder of CCSVI, the father of CCSVI. What do you think about that? But the father is simply that I was uh, the first uh, researcher who described the presence of venous insufficiency 
in the extracranial veins. So uh, this really get a lot of interest, and uh, uh, now we are we are moving to a society, to different group all over the world that are uh, researching in this field because of the interest generated by my first hypothesis paper. And they generated really research, confirm, sometimes uh, not confirmatory study. And, uh, but this is, this is normal in science. And, uh, and, for, and today also, uh, CCSVI concept is really controversial concept because especially a more traditional neurologists uh, uh, do not believe uh, in this or accept the fact that CCSVI does exist really, but uh, probably they do not consider this uh, a, a trigger factor or a very important factor uh, when considering neurodegeneration. I think that the next years and the next results will clarify definitely this point. And your paper originally came out in 2008 or 2009, is that Yes, it was published online first in 2008, uh, in November. And uh, I think that the subsequent year was a more Googled uh, medical paper. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the good and in the bad, generated uh, a big interest, but of course generated also uh, something very important in science. If it is a true interest and uh, the need of more research for understanding uh, uh, my theory, my hypothesis, to correct uh, uh, it and to update uh, uh, with new data. But considering how recent that was, don't you think the field is moving rather rapidly considering how, how new was, the hypothesis was? Was really rapid. Uh, I, I don't know exactly, but I think that uh, there are three major factors. One factor is that uh, is really so different from uh, what was the previous uh, thinking but in the same times, uh, it's not so difficult to, to investigate uh, and understanding if this was true or not. Uh, so it was really possible for a large amount of physicians to investigate uh, the presence of these abnormalities. So this probably was encouraging. The second was something really never seen in the history of medicine is the internet. And uh, the internet, uh, because this is a particular disease, MS, uh, is the major cause of uh, disabilities in young people. And young people are very smart with computer and with, so <laughs> they rapidly establish the connection among uh, uh, thousand really of patients and uh, curiosity and uh, they get involved with physician, neurologist, everybody. And so this uh, really was a, a little revolution. So I think that this were the, the reason, the difference, the, the possibility to test because it was not so difficult and the the internet in, with young people. Well, the patients are clearly enraptured by your theory. How do you get the neurologists and the rest of the medical community to catch up? Yes, there are, I think, two different, uh, um, two different behavior. One is not probably acceptable, is the preconceptual closure. This uh, probably, uh, I do not love this, of course. Uh, very much. The other, uh, I agree. Uh, I have to, to convince people because uh, they need of more evidence. And of course, Rome was not built in a day. So to, to build some evidence, uh, we need of more work, more time. 
more allied uh, researchers that are interested in, uh, like here at the International Society for Neurovascular Disease, this is very good, good group of people that are working. And uh, we need to wait for this evidence. But I think that uh, if uh, this group, ISMVD and our group, uh, should be capable to provide uh, new evidence, uh, certainly there, there will be a wide group of neurology that shift uh, uh, to our direction. So what happens now, Dr. Zamboni? But now there are very, very exciting perspectives. Uh, here we listen about a new possibility in diagnosis, very, very sophisticated or sometimes simple but uh, effective. And this probably may reduce uh, the skepticism about the existence of this disease because the diagnosis will become more and more easy. And the second are the randomized control trial for the treatment. Uh, there is premise in Buffalo, is just finishing. We had fund for, ma for our government for 3 million euro for uh, a large randomized control trial. Uh, we'll, we expect to recruit about 700 people. So, And this is really very exciting news because this is really uh, the path uh, to follow to create more evidence, more credibility in this field. What's the most critical takeaway for people to understand about your work? Uh, but the, the most critical is the preconceptual position. For example, during the first two years, uh, there were uh, a lot of articles. The majority of the opposition articles were not based on data, were based just on opinion, on preconceptual opinion. But uh, they were published on very important journals who were heavy opinions. <laughs> it was not very, was not very, very easy moments, certainly. But uh, in the meantime, our group uh, were working and they were publishing and uh, so I think that in the future, opinion will be less uh, and data will be more. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing, Doctor? I don't know really. This is, uh, uh, I hope so. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank